While working on Karen's True Power episode this week, I felt very inspired by her quote when she talks about winning with your favorites instead of just choosing Pokemon that are thought to be the strongest. Personally, this is a philosophy I've always adhered to in my playthroughs and even in online battles. There's just something about underrated Pokemon that I love, and perhaps if you clicked on this video, you're the same way too. Today we're kicking off a potential series where we overview the top 10 most underrated Pokemon of each type for competitive single battles. If you're excited for this and want to make it a series, make sure to drop a like down below and comment what type you want to see next. Today we're going to be counting down the top 10 underrated water type Pokemon, which is going to be pretty interesting since the water type has the most Pokemon out of any type, and is also considered to be one of the best types in competitive battling. Without any further ado, let's dive into it. Starting off with number 10 is actually going to be a Gen 8 Pokemon, Arctivish. Now the Gen 8 fossil Pokemon are, um, something, that's for sure. Apparently they're meant to be a play on the fact that some early archaeologists used to accidentally mismatch fossil pieces from different sources to try and get an idea of how the dinosaurs looked. Now I'm sure most of you know how prominent Dracovish has been. There are memes everywhere about how overpowered this thing is and in fact Smogon just banned it from standard competitive battles to the uber tier even though it's not a legendary or a mythical. Which is a very rare occurrence. Dracovish has really overshadowed the other fossils but perhaps none more than Arctivish. Arctivish is a water and ice type Pokemon that is currently in the NU or never used tier in the Gen 8 National Dex metagame, the second worst tier meaning it's not used by players very often. This is definitely quite strange, since if we look at its base stats they're actually quite impressive, with 80 to 100 in everything but speed and a great 505 base stat total. Arctivish is incredibly bulky and powerful too. It also has the crazy same type attack bonus or stab vicious rend move just like Dracovish, which has 85 base power and its power doubles if the user moves first. Granted, Arctivish is a bit slower, but paired with a choice scarf or even with full speed investment and a jolly nature, it's still going to be outspeeding quite a few things. Arctivish also has the slush rush ability which doubles its speed in hail. Although this is its hidden ability and isn't available in Sword and Shield yet until Fossil Raids or some other sort of event, it is available on Showdown which is where these usage stats are from and yet it's still in the NU tier. Alternatively, it has two other great abilities in Water Absorb and Ice Body. Aside from that, it's also got access to Stab Icicle Crash with a 30% chance to flinch, as well as Psychic Fangs, Body Slam, Rock Slide, and Crunch for coverage. Arctivish is certainly not as good as Dracovish, but it's still a really, really good Pokemon, and there's no way it belongs in the Never Used tier with all this going for it. Now that Dracovish is banned, I think it might be time for Arctivish to shine and hopefully people start to realize this. But until then, it is definitely super underrated. Up next on our list is going to be Slowking. Slowking is currently in the NU tier in competitive battling and it's really strange because I feel like if Slow Bro didn't exist, it would be way higher in the usage stats. Now you might say, okay so well just because there's a better Pokemon that outclasses it doesn't mean that it's underrated. But hold on, Slowbro has consistently been in the RU to OU tiers over the past 8 generations whereas Slowking has been in NU to UU, meaning it's always been 1 or 2 entire tiers below Slowbro and in fact Slowbro is used 18 times more than Slowking in OU. Now we all know Slowbro is a great Pokemon but what happened to Slowking? Well that's a great question. Slowking has the exact same base stat total as Slowbro at 490 and the only difference is that their special defense and defense are switched. They also have the exact same three abilities with their best being Regenerator, a fantastic ability which restores a third of their health if they're switched out. Both of them have great moves like Stab Scald with a chance to burn, Stab Psyshock, Ice Beam and Grass Knot for coverage, Slack Off for recovery, but get this, Slowking actually has some great moves that Slowbro doesn't have such as Fire Blast for great coverage against things that would otherwise wall them like Ferrothorn, Dragon Tail to force switches, and Nasty Plot to raise its special attack hugely. One could maybe make the argument that physical defense is a bit more preferable given their typing, but the difference is pretty minimal and there's no way that Slowking should be used 18 times less than Slowbro comparatively. And being in the never used tier given all that it can do, that's why it gets a spot on this list. It will definitely be interesting to see how their Galarian forms impact their rankings, that's for sure. At number 8 we have a Gen 6 Pokemon, Clawitzer. Clawitzer currently sits in the never used tier in competitive battling. It's got quite strong base stats overall with decent bulk and a massive 120 special attack, along with a solid total of 500. Its speed is definitely mediocre but maximum investment and a beneficial nature or even a choice scarf item could work really well on it. Clawitzer only has one possible ability but man is it ever a good one, Mega Launcher. 
Mega Launcher raises the power of all pulse and aura moves by an unreal 50%. Utilizing it as a special sweeper, Clawitzer's got access to Stab Water Pulse, as well as Dark Pulse and Aura Sphere, which all get that Mega Launcher boost, and provide amazing type coverage in addition to Ice Beam, which covers its grass weakness quite well. To give you a sense of this thing's power, think about Water Pulse for a second. It basically becomes a base 90 power with the Mega Launcher ability, being used with a 120 base special attack, same type attack bonus, and has a 20% chance to confuse the target. Clawitzer is absolutely phenomenal and is definitely underrated since most don't ever think to use it in battle. Next up we've got a Pokemon that I personally love using in competitive, Quagsire. Right off the bat, Water and Ground is a great typing with 1 immunity, 4 resistances, and only 1 weakness to Grass, which granted is a 4 times weakness. However, when thinking of a Water and Ground type Pokemon to use, most people immediately jump to Swampert, Gastrodon, or, as of Sword and Shield, Seismitoad. But Quagsire has largely been forgotten, having fallen from UU to the NU tier as of Gen 8. Quagsire's base stats don't look amazingly impressive on the face of it, having only a 430 total, but it does have a great HP, attack, and defense. Quagsire does have the incredible Unaware ability though, which ignores any stat boost that the opponent has whatsoever, making opponents unable to set up against it at all. With amazing moves like Stab Scald, Stab Waterfall, and Stab Earthquake, along with Curse to raise its defense and attack further, Toxic to Poison, and Recover to gain back health, Quagsire can cause a lot of trouble and has become incredibly underrated as of late. Next up is another fossil Pokemon, this time from Gen 5, Caracosta. Caracosta is currently in the PU tier, which is the lowest usage-based tier in competitive battling. Caracosta is a water and rock type Pokemon with interesting base stats. It has a good total of 495 with an insane 108 attack and 133 defense. Caracosta works well as both a mixed attacker and a mixed defender and is therefore very versatile both offensively and defensively, which is quite rare and can leave your opponent guessing as to what type of set you're running. Caracosta's best ability is Solid Rock, which decreases the damage done by super effective moves against Caracosta by 25%, which is super useful given that Caracosta has 4 weaknesses, but it also has access to Sturdy and Swift Swim to double its speed in rain. Caracosta's move pool is absolutely amazing. Not only do its base stats allow for effectiveness offensively and defensively, but its move pool does as well. One set that could be used is an offensive set that utilizes Shell Smash, which boosts Caracosta's attack, special attack, and speed by one stage and powers it up immensely. This allows Caracosta to get a boost on its Stab Stone Edge, Stab Hydro Pump, Stab Priority Aqua Jet to help with its low speed, and Ice Beam to help with grass types that threaten it. If that isn't amazing enough, it can also be run defensively with its Solid Rock ability and Stealth Rock, which is the best hazard move in the game, along with Toxic, or get rid of the opponent's held item using Knockoff. Caracosta's versatility in both base stats and movesets, and its great ability make it a threat to most Pokémon, and it could certainly be seeing more use than being in the same tier as Pokémon such as Vespiquin and Tangela. At the halfway mark, we've got a Pokémon that has been underrated for a long, long time. Golduck. For the past 5 generations, Golduck has been stuck in the NU tier or lower, and ever since Gen 5, it's been entirely untiered, meaning it doesn't even qualify for the worst competitive battling tier, PU. Now this might not be surprising to some people, but this very well might be. Golduck's base stat total is a great 500, with its lowest stat being 78, which is still pretty good. It also has two great abilities, Cloud 9, which gets rid of all weather as soon as it's switched in, imagine that against Tyranitar, Charizard, Ninetales, or Torkoal for instance, or Swift Swim to double its speed in rain, which it can even set up for itself using Rain Dance, in addition to the water power boost. With a 95 base special attack and moves like Stab Hydro Pump or Stab Scald, access to Calm Mind to raise its special attack and special defense even further, which a lot of people don't know that it has, and Psychic, Ice Beam, and even Focus Blast to help against Steel types, Golduck is a criminally underrated water type Pokemon and has been for some time. Just outside the metal positions at number 4 is a third generation Pokemon, Ludicolo. I have no doubt that Ludicolo's wacky design causes many people to underestimate it in battle, but Ludicolo is no joke. Unbelievably, Ludicolo is currently in the PU tier, the very worst tier. Ludicolo's grass and water typing is quite unique as the two types complement each other really well. For one thing, water gets rid of grass's fire weakness and grass gets rid of water's electric weakness. Ludicolo's base stats are quite well rounded overall with a respectable total of 480 with a solid 80 in HP, 90 in special attack, and 100 in special defense, and everything else at a passable 70. 
Its notable abilities include Rain Dish, which heals its HP by 1 16th every turn in Rain, and Swift Swim, which doubles its speed in Rain, which is very useful on a Pokemon like this. One of the biggest advantages that Ludicolo has is being able to use Rain Dance, meaning upon switching it can give itself the boost if necessary. With moves like Stab Hydro Pump, Stab Scald, Stab Giga Drain with Recovery, Ice Beam to help against super effective flying types, and even Focus Blast, Ludicolo is a great addition to any team and is far underrated for what it's capable of. It's no wonder that it absolutely dominates in PU, but I feel many people don't think to use it beyond that when they definitely could. And for the bronze medal, we have a Gen 2 Pokemon, Lantern. Now Lantern has got to be one of the most forgotten fully evolved Pokemon out there. Not only is it not used by any noteworthy characters in the anime nor the games, but it has consistently been placed in one of the lower tiers in competitive battling since its release. Lantern is currently in the never used tier but has a very unique and amazing typing, Water and Electric. That means Lantern has one strong resistance, four regular resistances, and is only weak to grass and ground. Lantern's base stats are quite impressive. It has an unreal 125 in HP, and everything else being between 58 and 76 for a grand total of 460. If you're thinking its defenses are low, think again. That 125 HP makes up for it hugely. It also has two noteworthy abilities, Volt Absorb and Water Absorb. These abilities both have similar functions. Volt Absorb heals 25% of Lantern's health if it's hit by an electric attack, and Water Absorb does the same thing for water attacks. Volt Absorb is usually the preferred option since it grants a brand new immunity to Electric to Lantern and makes its typing even better. But it of course depends on what you need for your team. Lantern's move pool serves as yet another bonus. It has Stab Scald, Stab Hydro Pump, Stab Volt Switch for pivoting, Ice Beam for coverage against the two types that it's weak to, Grass and Ground, Dazzling Gleam for more coverage, and Toxic, Thunder Wave, Protect, and even Heal Bell for amazing utility if needed. Pair this thing with leftovers or even an assault vest to boost its special defense by 50% and you have a wicked tank that is very hard to take down but can also get some good damage off. And the number 2 spot is going to go to a Pokemon you guys know is one of my favorites, Kingdra. But I promise it's not just on here because it's my channel mascot, this thing is super underrated. Let me put it to you this way. Imagine a Pokemon that has a base stat total of 540, the highest by far on this list. It has 4 stats that are 95, one stat at 85, and another at 75. It has the incredible Water and Dragon typing with 2 strong resistances, 1 regular resistance, and only 2 weaknesses, one of which is Dragon that it can also counter back. It has amazing abilities like Swift Swim to double its speed in rain and Sniper which raises its critical hit ratio, which can be combined with a scope lens and one focus energy move to guarantee critical hits every time it uses a move. It also has an incredible move pool including Stab Hydro Pump, Stab Draco Meteor, Ice Beam for coverage against other dragons, Flash Cannon for coverage against fairies, or it can go entirely physical with Dragon Dance to set up along with Stab Outrage and Stab Waterfall. Given all of this, where do you think you'd place this Pokemon in terms of tiers? One might imagine something like UU or maybe even OU would fit pretty well. Nope. This thing is in the NUBL tier, stuck between never used and rarely used. Think about that, it doesn't even make the rarely used tier. This thing is ridiculously underrated and honestly it can fulfill a very similar role to Dracovish minus Ficious Rend, but with the added capability of using either physical or special attacks to throw off opponents. Perhaps now that Dracovish is banned, it can finally get its chance to shine. And the number one most underrated water type Pokemon is likely going to surprise a lot of people and that's exactly what makes it so underrated. Sea King. Aside from the 2008 memes, Sea King is hugely forgotten and currently doesn't even qualify for the worst tier in competitive, meaning it's untiered, which is insane to me. With a decent 450 base stat total with all stats between 65 and 92, Sea King could be considered a slightly bulky attacker. What's incredible is that it has two amazing abilities, Swift Swim to increase its mediocre speed hugely, or Lightning Rod which makes it immune to one of its weaknesses, Electric, which is phenomenal. That means it only has one weakness, Grass, and four resistances and it serves as a perfect counter to a type that most would think would spell the end of it. Sea King was always really underrated sticking around the PU tier, but now even despite having gotten access to Swords Dance to increase its attack stat massively, it's even worse ranked. I just can't believe it. 
It also has other great moves like Stab Waterfall and ridiculous coverage, like the Dark-type Knockoff to get rid of the opponent's item, the Ground-type Drill Run to counter Electric types, Poison Jab to take care of opposing Grass types which threaten it and bulky Fairy types, and Mega Horn to help with Grass, Psychic, and Dark types. Sea King is a hugely versatile monster with only one weakness and great setup capabilities. I kid you not, I've slapped an Assault Vest on this thing and used it very successfully even in standard OU battles, five entire tiers above where it's currently ranked, and people just don't know how to deal with it at all. It's kind of funny, but also kind of sad. It's crazy to me that many people don't appreciate what this beast is really capable of. There are definitely a lot more underrated Pokemon out there, so here are a few honorable mentions that didn't quite make the list for one reason or another, but they are definitely underrated given their respective capabilities in battle. Well, there we go everyone, the top 10 underrated water type Pokemon. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to let me know and leave a like if you'd like to see more. Let me know in the comments what Pokemon surprised you and any other Pokemon you think should be considered on this list or what type you think we should do next. Don't forget to subscribe and ring that notification bell so you're the first to see new videos. If you guys enjoy my content and wish to support it and get some cool perks, feel free to check out my Patreon in the description below. And a huge thanks to all my current patrons for your very generous support of the channel. With that being said, this has been Soul Spectre, and I'll see you guys next time for another Pokemon video.